it's a it's a wet day out there today, and uh, but the Lord saw fit that we needed some rain to cool the temperatures down. We thank Him for that, and He saw fit to give us some rain to put some moisture back into the ground. So we praise Him for that, and we're so thankful for all the great things that God has done for us, and we just praise Him for all things. Uh huh. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for a beautiful weather we had last week for Vacation Bible. <clears throat> we had great weather. Uh, for Bible school, the rain held off on us, and uh, some of the overcast did make it a little bit cooler. So it was. It was a great week, and we do thank God for that. And we did have a, a just a, a fantastic week uh, for Bible school there. And um, as you can see, we had a big week uh, for Bible school. So by way of the announcements this morning that I want to share with you, I want to remind uh, our students and our parents at Cornerstone it's still meeting, and it's from 4 to 6, and um, uh, we're keeping that regular schedule. But again, if all the kids will come to this door, and, and everyone drop off to the south parking lot, south side door, and come in, this is where we're checking everybody in and everything. But uh, Brendan is just still, uh, again, the teachers still have Cornerstone going and are just doing a great job with, uh, with teaching our students and, and, and showing the Bible and everything, so I'm really thankful for that. And uh, so if anyone can make it there, uh, 4, 4 to 6, we hope that you can do that. Bible study Wednesday night, we are still doing it online. So be uh, watch for our Bible study uh, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock as it will come up online there. And um, our Bible school. Bible school was just, it, it was a success. Um, I, I don't know how many of you may have seen my post that I put on there uh, yesterday. But even though we were limited and even though we had these restrictions and, 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 and cut off numbers and everything, it still was one of the best Bible schools that we had. Um, we did, the kids worked with us. The kids were patient with us. The workers were patient with the kids. It was just a win-win all the way around. And uh, we wound up having 47 students enrolled. We uh, ran about 43 every day. And um, it was just a, a really uh, a tremendous week. It really was. Now, as you can see, all the cans behind us, uh, and, and if you saw my post, you'll, you'll remember what I said, that it started off with just saying, well, this is our mission project. We'll just get cans for the food bank. And then by the end of Monday, it turned into, well, let's see which class can bring the most cans. To Tuesday, well, the class that gets the most cans ought to get raising cane certificates. To two, by the end of Tuesday, that whoever, whatever class brings the least amount, then that teacher needs to get the ice bucket. And so it just evolved and evolved, and it became such a fierce competition that we wound up with a total of 2,883 2, cans, which this Brother David counted. <laughs> he assures us that's it. I told him, I said, Josh wanted to recount. He said, well, Josh can recount them all he wants. <laughs> And Josh wanted to recount because he lost, that's why. Uh, but anyway, so we've got that, plus all these other non-perishables. So it was a good turnout. This is a good way that we're going to help our food bank. We're also going to put together some care packages for some shut-ins in the community out of this, too. So it was just a really, really good day. We are going to box all this and prepare this tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So if anyone has some free time and would like to come by, uh, we'll be here for a while, I'm sure. Uh, but we're going to get all this prepared to go to our daily bread tomorrow at 3. So anyone that can come out and help with it will gladly uh, appreciate uh, that help. But it was a fantastic week. I thank everyone that helped. I thank everyone that worked. I thank everyone that prayed for uh, The biggest part of Bible school, too, is the prayer that goes along with it. And so we're so thankful for that. Um, most of you may have heard already, but in case you didn't, um, Miss Nella Henry did pass away this week too. Um, she succumbed to her um, breathing problem. Well, she went into kidney failure uh, and and um, and went septic. So she did pass away too uh, at the end of this week. So we need to keep that family in very special. And this week and the days to come uh, there too. Um, but I'm so thankful that y'all are here. Thank y'all for coming out. Thank you for being here. Again, thank you for supporting our Bible school. Thank you for allowing us to do it again. Um, you know, I was, um, 
The pastor at, at uh, uh, Medica came by yesterday to pick up some of our stuff that we sent on them. They're doing this week, uh, Monday through Wednesday, and we were talking about it, and really we, between the two of us, we only knew about five churches in our parish that was doing, uh, in our association that was doing Bible school. So I'm glad we got to do it, and, uh, and uh, it was a blessing to the kids. We planted so many seeds. The kids were so attentive. And we're listening very well. So uh, I just thank everyone for that. And to everyone that's joining us at home, good to have you with us this morning. Thank you all uh, again for uh, clicking us on and worshiping with us. And, and that's what we want to do today. We want to worship. We want to thank Jesus. We want to praise him for all the great and tremendous blessings that he has given to us. One last announcement before uh, we pray and begin our service. Next Sunday... Uh, will be August, and we're going to kind of change things up a little bit more. Next Sunday, we're going to go back to our regular 11 o'clock schedule. So please make note of that, and everyone that's at home, please make note of that. We'll post reminders throughout the week that we are going to go back to a somewhat regular schedule next Sunday with the beginning of August. So next Sunday morning, uh, worship service, church will begin at 11 o'clock at normal time. And we're going to tag, go ahead and tag back on Sunday school next week. Now, here's how Sunday school will work. It will be from 10 to 10.30. And we will only have two classes. The adults will meet in here. We'll spread out in here. Josh is going to be teaching for August. And so uh, uh, well, the adults will meet in here. And we'll have Sunday school lesson. Anyone that would like to come, it's all just going to be together from 10 to 10.30, and then Brennan will be teaching the kids in the fellowship hall, and, and he'll be doing Sunday school with him with them. So starting next Sunday, 10 to 10.30, two Sunday school classes, an adult class in here, children's class, student class uh, in the um, uh, fellowship hall, and then regular service begins back on our 11 o'clock schedule next Sunday. Like I said, we'll post reminders and send out reminders but please make note of that, that we're going to try to get a little more normal with our schedule next Sunday. Again, thank y'all for coming. Glad that y'all are here. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll begin our services. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that you are in charge. Thank you so much, God, that all things are subject under your hand. Thank you, Father, that no matter what pops up down here, no matter what we are prepared for, no matter what we're not prepared for, you always know. And Father, in so many instances, in so many ways, you have made provision before we even know we need a provision, just like Jesus. Before we even knew we were lost, before we even knew about our sinful state, you sent your Son and you had a plan to save us before we ever knew it. Father, and in so many other ways in our lives and, and in our world, the plan, the solution is there already. We may not see it, but you've taken care of it. So Father God, this morning we want to come to you and we want to thank you for the life that we have in Christ. We want to thank you for the joy that we have in Christ. We want to thank you, God, that everything Everything that makes us who we are is a gift from you. Everything that, 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 that drives us every day ultimately comes from you. Everything about each and every one of us comes from the life that we have with Jesus Christ. And Father, I have quoted and remembered the scripture for so, so many years. Where Jesus said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. When without me, you can do nothing. But Father, each and every day, I see more and more what you meant by that. Each and every day, I see how much more important Jesus is and what I can and, and really cannot do without him. And Father, I pray that every believer, every brother and sister in Christ that I have in this whole big world, will have that same um, uh, experience, that same growth, and that you will become that much more special every day. Thank you, God, that Jesus is 
our foundation. Thank you, God, that he is our strong foundation. Thank you, God, that you are going to bring everything into completion that you have started in us. And that work began the day that we received Christ as our Savior and experienced your salvation gift. And you have always kept your word on So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, man. In Jesus' most wonderful and holy and perfect name. Amen. Oh, I forgot to put that up there. It's a group picture. I forgot I put that on there. That's all the kids that was here and, and our workers and everything. So it was a it was a good week. Very good week. All right, our first hymn is going to be hymn number 335, Standing on the Promises. Would you please rise? As our motto was, Jesus is our strong foundation. And I can tell you, the kids who came this week got that message. Yeah. We uh, we started them on a strong foundation of Jesus.
chapter 10 and chapter 11. I'm going to start in verse 38 of chapter 10 and go down to verse 3 in chapter 11. But the righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering of the soul. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for it is by the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Okay, our next hymn is hymn 441. And number 441, since Jesus came into my heart.
song is going to be the Offertory Hymn 330. If you would please stand. The usher is going to pass around the plate while we sing the song. Father God, in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for another day, Father, that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the rain outside, Lord, that, that you've given us this morning, Father. We know that you know exactly what we need, Father, and we just praise you for that. And Lord, the, the next few minutes here, I, I just pray that we clear our minds of everything going on around us, Lord, and that our focus is solely on Jesus, Lord. I pray that you give Brother Eric the words to speak here this morning, Father, and that your spirit and your conviction will just be alive and well in this place, Father. And we thank you for salvation that you've given each one of us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verse.
also I had to thank Jesus that the children were here, that they needed this together to, to um, be a shut up all the time. And I think they needed to be, together, to be together with other children, to enjoy other children, and to enjoy the teaching of Jesus' word. Amen. Amen. It was all it was. good. It was all great. It was. They, the kids were just fantastic. This week. They were great. And I just feel like although we were limited this year with our numbers, um, you know, but I still think that the kids who were here, they received blessings, they received Jesus, they received seeds planted. And like I was talking to some of the other teachers, whenever we had a Bible school with, you know, 135, 140 kids, it's a lot different when we just had 43 because now you were, I felt like you got to be closer and you got to know the kids more one-on-one -on -one with them. You got to make a, maybe a larger impact than you would have with a larger group setting. So in many ways, um, this pandemic has been a blessing for different reasons. So I think that Bible School All in All was a great success this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone else that was here that wants to just share anything about the week? I said, not kind of put anybody on the spot. Just wanted to ask that. I am so thankful for everyone that worked, everyone that participated in it. And this morning, the title of the sermon is A Life in Christ. So last Sunday, we talked about Jesus being our strong foundation, which was the motto, the theme for the week of Bible school for concrete and cranes. And, and, and so the, the next step, the next sermon that we have to preach is if he is our foundation, well, then what's the life like? How do we apply this? How do we change? And, and there's no better place, really, than John chapter 15 to go to, to read about what life in Christ is like. And there are four things that I want to share with you this morning about this life. If we are based, now, now this is something that when I spoke to the kids on Thursday morning, this was one of the things that I made sure they understood. Life cannot happen unless it is grounded in Jesus Christ. And I know I said that in here last Sunday morning. Without us having that solid foundation, without us being established and building upon Jesus himself and his selfless act on the cross, we cannot live, we cannot have a life that is right with God. We can't have a life that we would really uh, uh, benefit from here on this earth. If you are living a life with Jesus Christ, you may be the richest person in the world. You may be the most famous person in the world. Let's just go to that extreme. You've got everything at your fingertips. If you are living a life without Jesus Christ, when you die, you've got nothing. Everything you've collected, everything that you have achieved, everything that you've been recognized for will simply be a memory. And you won't have any of it with you in the afterlife. You'll only be in condemnation. But with a life in Christ, no matter if you have everything here, you learn that that's secondary. Because <clears throat> when you die, you still can't take any of it with you. But you'll still be alive. And you'll still have life. And you'll be living in heaven. And you'll be with him forever and ever and ever. And that's kind of what I want to talk with you about today. So John chapter 15. We're going to read the first 11 verses. And I invite you to stand in, in reverence of the reading of the word of God. As we look at a life in Christ. Jesus is speaking. <clears throat> and this is what he says. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 15. Now I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. 
If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Let's pray again. Lord God, the powerful words that Jesus speaks here. And Father, we know that every word that Jesus spoke contained the power of on high. But Lord, these words have to deal with life. These words have to deal with death. These words deal with a relationship with you. These words deal with a relationship apart from you. So, Father, this morning we ask, Lord, that you will help us to examine ourselves, see what kind of relationship we have, examine ourselves, see where we stand with you. And, God, that you will use these words to change us today. Father, all glory is yours. All life is yours. And, and, and we are appreciative of, of everything that you have bestowed upon us. Father God, we just ask that everything we do in return will bring glory to your name. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray to you. Amen. And amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So everything that I said a while ago about if you die and you don't have Christ and if you live... Uh, or you have Christ and you die. I wanted you to focus right now with what I said a while ago on verse 11. Let's just read that verse again. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. And that your joy may be full or complete. Whatever your translation says. Jesus says that he is the source of joy. Jesus says all these things that I have told you about living. All these things that I'm sharing with you about life in me, about life in God, ultimately, everything that Jesus is sharing about salvation, he says it comes from me. It is rooted in my joy. It is rooted, and what is that joy? It is the joy of fulfilling the will of the Father. It is the joy, believe it or not, it is the joy of the cross. Even though Jesus was going to be humiliated, even though Jesus was going to be hurt, even though Jesus was going to be hanging on the cross for literally the whole world to see, he found joy in that. And Jesus says, the joy that is, is in me, the joy of fulfilling the Father's plan, which is salvation to you, that's what I want to give you. That's how you abide in me. That's how I abide in you. Because of the salvation plan. And it's my joy to be a part of this plan. It is my joy to be the instigator of this plan. And then Jesus says, And because of that, your joy, your life, may be full, may be complete. Jesus says, the, the, the plan is the God's plan of salvation. Jesus says that I am ecstatic to be a part of that plan and to be how that plan comes into play and because of my part guess what now you get to be excited about salvation and about life and about joy so you see in this one verse we see that jesus is the great foundation because our lives can only be complete by the act of jesus our lives can only be filled with joy by the joy of jesus Fulfilling the plan of the Father. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. And we can have nothing without him. So let's dwell on this for just a moment. The first thing that I want you to see this morning is simply this. A life in Christ is originated in faith. A life in Christ is originated in faith. Jesus says, without me you can do nothing. You must abide in me. I must abide in you. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. It's just like if you were to go out and you see all of the dead limbs on your trees. Dead limbs on your different plants and bushes. You prune them, you cut them, you get rid of them. And when you cut them, you don't normally just let them sit there on the ground and rot. You usually pick them up and you throw them in a pile. And eventually you're going to put that pile on fire and you're going to burn and get rid of what's dead. The picture that Jesus is painting for us in these 11 verses is that without him, we're dead. And without them, without him, without salvation, without a life in Christ, the Father, God Almighty, is going to prune. And guess what? There is a fire that these branches that are dead, that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, are going to be thrown into. And in Revelation, it's called the Great Lake of Fire. And the Father is going to cast all these dead limbs, all these uh, branches, all these people who do not have a life in Christ into the fire. But if we abide in Christ, if we accept the plan of salvation, if we allow Jesus into our hearts, we are now living. We won't be pruned, but we will have this relationship with God. And this life can only originate uh, in uh, Jesus. This life in Christ can only originate through our faith. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, which is a very familiar verse. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any one should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, Paul says, the only way that you're saved is by faith. And this faith is a gift of God's grace. And there's absolutely nothing you can do to save yourself. This faith, this eternal life is not man-made. It was made and planned by God, and it's only possible through Jesus Christ. So to have a life in Christ, we must have faith. Faith must be the foundation of our salvation. Faith must be the foundation uh, of everything that we do in Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 6, the, the chapter before we just read, Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, and there is no exception to that, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to live with God, if you want to spend eternity in the presence of God, you can only get there through Jesus Christ. I recently heard a, a description, and I was watching this uh, uh, the service of the preacher, and this is what he says. Picture, if you will, that you are going in, and, and I've done this, so, so I understood this. You are walking into the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., and the only way that you can get into the Capitol building is if you walk through that metal detector. And that metal detector will detect the metal. And I think I've told you all the story before. Back in 1989, when our senior uh, class, when our, our, our high school, my senior, we went and we sang in Washington, D.C. And we went to tour the Capitol building. And this one girl in my group, she went through that metal detector about four or five times because it kept going off. And they come to find out she had bought these new Levi jeans. For the trip and it had a metal tag right there on the back and that's what kept going on so that metal detector will find it and you do not get into the capitol building unless you go through the metal detector and you are clear you cannot get into the kingdom of heaven unless you walk through jesus christ and you are clear every time that metal detector beat Tina had to back up, empty out her pockets, get checked, go through again. But with heaven, there is no backing up and trying again. You are either cleared by Christ or you don't get in at all. 
He's not a metal detector. This is a life detector. And Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And this life in him, this life eternal, originates in our faith. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Dr. Luke says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Again, the Bible reiterates it's Jesus and Jesus alone, no one else. If you do not have Christ, if he is not your strong foundation, if you are not building a life upon him, you do not have life. You have a lack of faith. You have a lack of the gift of mercy and grace of God. And you are not going to go to heaven. You are not going to live forever. You are not abiding in Christ. You will be pruned when you die and cast in the fire because you're dead. And you've got nothing to show for it. Not my words. Jesus' words. Don't blame the messenger, because this is the message. To have a life in Christ, we must have our foundation in Jesus. To have a foundation in Jesus, a life in Christ, uh, faith must be the origin of that life. Second thing that Jesus says to us this morning is this. A life in Christ is a life continued in faith. A life of Christ is a life continued in faith. Faith. If you go back to verse 4, Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you. That is a continual action. Jesus isn't referring to the past. He's referring to the right now. If you continue to abide in me, if you continue to live a life that brings glory to me, I will continue to bless you. I will continue to lift you up. I will continue to reward you. To get saved, and I, and, and I know this is a, an old cliche, but it's pretty accurate. To be saved is to have more than fire insurance. There are a lot of people that want to get saved because they don't want to go to hell, but then they don't want to live for Christ. And to abide in Christ, we have to bear fruit. To abide in Christ, we must be different. To abide in Christ, to have a life in Christ, means that we change the way we live. We change the way we think. We change our motivations. We change everything that makes us from where we were to where we are because we have a new life and we are a new creation and it is a continual life. It goes on and on. Abide in me. Jesus is saying right now, this day, you will abide in me and I will live in you. You will glorify me and I will bless you. Paul says for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and here is a continual verse. For we walk by faith, not by sight. He says, every day we walk by faith. We don't walk by what we see. We don't guide, or we shouldn't. Let me rephrase that. Christians shouldn't walk day to day, judging their lives off of what they see going on around. Christians shouldn't walk every day, judging off what other people think or do. Christians shouldn't walk through the day off of how I'm feeling today, and this and that, and this and that. We are to walk every day by faith. When you get up in the morning, and I don't want to sound cruel here, but let's just put the facts out on the table. When you wake up in the morning and you sit up in the bed, you have no idea if you're going to lay back down in that bed that night. You may be in a hospital bed. You may be in a wheelchair. You may be in the ground. You may be in heaven. When you get up every morning, you have no guarantee that you're laying back down in that pillow. So every day, you should live a life that demonstrates your faith. Every day, even though, oh, let me go back to my original thought. Even though you don't know where you're going to end that day up, God knows. 
God knows if you're getting back in that bed. God knows if you're going to fall asleep in that recliner in front of the TV. God knows if you're going to be in the hospital. God knows if you're going to be in heaven. God knows where your day will end. So wouldn't it be great to walk with the one that knows? Wouldn't it be great to, to just hold hands with the one that knows everything? That knows how your day is going to be? That knows the challenges already that you're going to face? That knows the strength? And the encouragement that you already need for the day. Jesus is, is it's a continual faith. It's a continual life. And to live in Christ is to acknowledge that we don't live by seeing and judging and acting off the things around us. But by having faith. But by trusting God. By trusting Jesus to take care of us each and every day. This is a life of a life in Christ. It is a life of faith. It is a life of trust. Number three, a life in Christ is a life dedicated to God. A life in Christ is a life dedicated to God. Jesus died on the cross for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. And I don't know about you, but for me, I owe him everything. Because he gave me this life. He gave me this faith. He gave me this gift. He gave me this mercy. And he has given you the exact same thing. So in return, we should dedicate ourselves to him. In return, we should live for him. In return, we should put him first. Go back with me, if you will, to verse 10. Look at the words of Jesus Christ. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus says, everything the Father ever asked me, I did. And I obeyed him, and I lived a life that was dedicated to him. And he says, because of my dedication, my love for the Father is evident. Because of my dedication... Your lives have been changed. Because of my dedication, the will of God is known to man. Because of my dedication to the Father, I'm able to say, I've come, I love you, I'm dying for you, and I'm doing all this. And Jesus says, just as I have been dedicated to the Father and my love for him is evident, he says the same thing is possible for you. Are we perfect? No. Are we like Jesus? No. Can we do the things Jesus did? No. But he says to us we can be like him in that if we love the Father, if we dedicate our lives to the Father, it will be evident to others. Just as his dedication was evident to us. Just as his uh, dedication was evident to those that were closest to him in that day. He says, you can, verse 10, keep my commandments and you will abide in me. You will live in me. Abide and faith and life all go together. If you are dedicated to me, listen to it like this. If you are dedicated to me, then you will live in me. If you are dedicated to me, then you will have faith in me. And you will trust me just as I dedicated my life to God. And my life was evident in him. Folks, we get saved and it's by faith. And then that life is a continual growing in faith each and every day. And a part of that is to show our dedication to the Father. Again, He died for you. He's the only way you have salvation. He's the only way that you're going to heaven. And so you should not only be appreciative, you should be dedicated. Because remember what Jesus said just prior to this? Without me, you can do nothing. So it's very important that we are dedicated because that's the evidence. That's what other people see. And if you see a Christian who says, I'm a Christian, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet you see them in the, you, you know they're going to the bars, you know they're going to, the, that they're involved in drugs, you know they're involved in, in, in all these things they shouldn't be, where's the evidence that they love God? Better yet, where's the evidence that they really are a Christian? 
What if you had a friend or a co-worker that came up to you and invited you to church because they're a Christian, but yet you know how they live? Would you really want to go to church with them? Would you really want to go visit? Probably not. But when a Christian exhibits their dedication, when a Christian displays how much God really means to them, when it is so evident that this brother or sister in Christ loves the Lord and is dedicated and, 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 and wants to share this love and this joy and this happiness with you so that you can get a part of it, you'll want to be around that. You'll want to go to worship with that. You'll want to see what this person has, whether you're a Christian or not. It is the bubbly joy. It is the presence of Jesus Christ. Let, let, me, let, me, let me throw you in a free one here. I won't charge you for this one. You cannot draw a person to Jesus Christ. It is the working of the Holy Spirit within you that draws people to Jesus Christ. I didn't get saved because of my pastor or my youth director. I got saved because I saw Christ in my pastor, Christ in my youth director. And the Holy Spirit working in them convicted me to show me what was available to me. It wasn't Dr. Bailey Smith that led me to the Lord that night. It was the Holy Spirit, the very presence of Jesus Christ working in Dr. Bailey Smith that drew me to salvation. Because these men and these women that were a part of my life were dedicated to God and they were, they, they were used by God. And I am thankful for them because they were the means by which the Holy Spirit brought me to salvation. Because they were rooted in their faith, they, 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 they continued in their faith, and they showed it. They showed it. Which brings us to the last point that I want to share with you this morning, and this is this. A life in Christ is a life that grows others. Because of my pastor, because of my youth director, because of Dr. Smith, because of my parents, because of things that I saw in others, I became a Christian. My life was changed. Go back with me to verse 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, what? Bears much fruit. Verse 8. But this, my thought by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And then we're seen as the disciples of Jesus Christ, the followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus says when we are living in him, when we are grounded and rooted and originated in our faith, and we continue to live a life of faith, and we live a life that is dedicated to God because of our faith, then we begin to change others. We begin to bear fruit. That's leading other, uh, That means two things. You're either leading other, other people to Jesus by the Holy Spirit in you, or you are being used to lead other Christians into a deeper, faithful walk with Jesus. But anyway, you are the means by which the Holy Spirit is working. Remember what we read a while ago? Lest no man should boast. I can't boast about anything except that Jesus is using me. And when we are doing the first three things... Then the fourth thing, the, 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 the growing of others, it is working and it's evident and lives are being changed. And then Jesus says in verse 8, if you are doing this, then God is glorified. Which should be the ultimate goal of any of our lives. That God be glorified. Remember the song, be glorified, be glorified. We want God to be glorified in our lives. We want God to be glorified in all that we do. We want people to come to know God, not come to know us. Not come to know French Corner Baptist Church. We want them to come to know Jesus Christ. Walking in these doors and sitting in every other pew like we have to right now, nobody is going to heaven because of that. They are, going to go, they are only going to go to heaven because of a faithful relationship in Jesus Christ. 
A person is not going to go to heaven because they know you and you're a Christian. They are only going to go to heaven because of a faithful relationship with Jesus Christ. And no other way. So last week, we need to have Jesus as our strong foundation. Now this week we see why. That foundation must be faith. And once that foundation is faith, we need to continue and grow and live in that faith. And as we grow and live in that faith, then we are to be uh, dedicated to God for others to see because that opens the door for us to be used to change others' lives for the glory of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that the Bible, your word, makes this a very clear cycle. And that cycle is grounded and started in Jesus Christ and it ends in Jesus Christ. He is the full cycle. Your love, your salvation gift is the full cycle of life. And Father, I pray that this morning that everyone that's here today will have a life that is a part of the circle. That they will have a life that is grounded and rooted in Jesus and that it will grow and that it will change others. Father, I pray this morning that if there's anyone here that has never, that does not have a life and has never accepted Christ the Savior, that this would be the day of salvation because we don't know where we're all going to end up at the uh, end of this day. And Father, if there are any believers in here this morning that are slacking, that have stepped back, I pray, Father, that they will have the strength to step up and ask for forgiveness and find restoration in their walk with you because you're ready to give that. Father, I pray that this morning we shall all be a part of a life with Christ and that we will be flourishing and benefiting in that life and that, Father, ultimately our lives in Christ will truly and undeniably bring glory to your name. That should be our heart's desire, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you lead us all in that direction. Now, with every head still bowed, every eye still closed, I offer an invitation to you, and the invitation is, will you come to Christ? Now, like I said last week, we're, we're not going to have a formal invitation, but if you need to talk to me, I will be glad to talk to you afterwards one-on-one. -on -one. And if you need salvation, if you need to know about having a relationship with Christ, I'll be glad to tell you and walk you through it. Or if you have a, 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 a relationship and, and you just need to rededicate your life, I'll be glad to pray with you. But ultimately, it comes down to you and your relationship. All I can do is pray. You have to make the decision. And so the decision is yours. A life in Christ or a life apart from Christ. Remember we said that about that drawing in the sand? That line's still there. That line's still there. Amen. Thank y'all so much for coming today. Thank y'all for being a part of our service. Thank you to everyone that's going to be watching uh, the service at home. We appreciate you taking the time to worship with us today. I pray that all the singing and the prayers and the word go home with you. And that, it will all, uh, that the Holy Spirit will use every part of it to better you and increase his work in your life. And that you will be able to bring more glory to God. Amen. Amen. It's still drizzling. Y'all be careful going home. Uh, 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 it's not so bad, so we'll try to go ahead and pray and get out before the next Billy washer comes in. But I thank y'all so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. I love you. And I thank y'all so much for your time today. Let's stand and we're going to dismiss the group. Oh. I just, uh, this evening, Cornerstone, we will be meeting at 4 o'clock. Just a reminder for all of our students. And we're going to start a new lesson series tonight on the Lord's Prayer, the Model Prayer. And we're going to begin tonight with the topic, What is Prayer? Amen. And so and I invite all of our students to come. Everyone's invited, um, all ages. And we're going to
have had worship, we'll have our Bible studies, and games, and activities, and a snack. So that's at four and six this season. Amen. Very important topic for our kids to learn. Our students learn prayer. What is it? So I hope that, that you can be here for that. And tomorrow at 3.30, or 3, excuse me, if you can come and help, uh, we'll start boxing up the cans and getting them ready to go. All right. What a joy to have you all. I pray that you all just be safe and be blessed this week. As we close out our service, let me ask Brother George Myers, if you will, sir, to voice our prayer to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for your love.